Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on such a beautiful Sunday morning. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to start our service by singing our opening chant, We Are the Harvest. Good morning, everyone. So glad you could join us this morning here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science, whether you're here in person, so nice to see all of you who are here, as well as those of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. Welcome. For those of you who are here in person, if you could just make sure that if you have a cell phone or any device that might uh, make noise during the service, if you make sure that's silenced, Right now, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So let's begin by joining in consciousness and coming together in prayer. As we turn our attention inward and allow ourselves to connect with that part of us that is birthless, deathless, that part that seeks every moment to experience good in every way possible, as love, as joy, as beauty, wholeness, abundance. And we recognize that as the vibration of that one life, that one power, that one presence that is God, that is the one out of which everything and everyone is created, and that lives at the center of all that is, including each and every one of us. I absolutely know that that love, wholeness, and goodness of God is flowing throughout our time together this morning. 
that we just feel that vibration of God's love as we join together as a community, in person and virtually, that we are touched by the love of all of those who are of service this morning. I know that God's beauty and inspiration flows through our music ministry, through Sam and Karen and our soloist Susan Kay this morning. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect message of the divine through Dr. Mark. That Dr. Mark is the channel through which we hear exactly what we need to hear this morning to awaken to that presence within us, to experience it more fully, to express it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right now in this moment for all the blessings that we experience throughout this service. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, Surely the Presence.
take this time now to just get still and give ourselves the gift of five minutes sitting in this stillness and communing with that presence within each of us. So for the next five minutes, I invite you to just get comfortable in your seats, to close your eyes, and to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
could not remember how to feel. It's like my heart had turned to steel. Where do I fit in? I thought I knew the game. I found myself again the fool. God, I get to make the rules. Here I am, back to my muse, back to my heart, back to being alive, feeling the spark. Here I am, here I am, back to the love, back to the light, back to no. Again, my heart has been set free. Susan K. Wyatt, everyone, thank you for being with us. How wonderful to have Sam back with us as well. Yay, Susan, Sam. Ah, good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're watching us on Zoom or Facebook, thank you for being with us as well. 
I'm going to talk today about uh, joy, which I thought would be kind of interesting since last week I talked about depression and it was time for the <laughs> pendulum uh, to swing. In the science of mind teaching, I believe that we individually are absolutely responsible for our own happiness regardless of the circumstances that we experience in our life. Um, this is certainly true for us as students of science of mind, but I think it's true for everybody whether you're in this philosophy or not. And this is an interesting thing to look at right now today with everything that's happening on the face of the earth. I mean, so we have pandemic things happening and we have weather things happening and uh, America is moving out of Afghanistan and all kinds of stuff is happening there and there's so much going on that when I sit and think about this idea of joy and being joyful, there's a little piece of me, if I tell you the absolute truth, there's a little voice in me that says it's almost a little selfish, you know, you being joyful when all this other stuff, big heavy stuff, is happening in the world. And so I sit with that and, and I'm like, well, Spirit, help me to understand. And what comes to me is a phrase out of our textbook from Ernest Holmes where he says, every soul comes into life with a gift to give, a lesson to learn, and a debt to pay. Wow, that's really interesting to me, that everybody comes in with a gift to give. I believe that that's true. I haven't met anybody who I didn't think was here in life that had some gift, and I haven't met anybody who didn't think they had a gift, although I will tell you as soon as I say that, I reflect back on a woman I was speaking to years ago, and she was very unhappy, and I was trying to help her discover what it was that she might be here to do. And I said, so what do you think your spiritual gift might be? What do you think it is? What's so uniquely you that nobody else has? And she says, well, and she said this in, in absolute seriousness. She said, well, I think that God has given me an incredible ability to detect other people's faults. <laughs> and I said, that's not a spiritual gift. <laughs> and she said, it's not. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I said, and forgive me in advance, but that's just a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, forgive me in advance. I'm sorry. See, the truth is we can pretty much do anything we decide to do because we are working with a principle that's infinite. And it has done unto us as we believe. So I think, all right, even though all of this stuff is happening on the face of the earth, people are still getting married, they're falling in love, babies are born, there are children's birthday parties, kids are getting excited to get their first lunchbox for school. I mean, all these other things. And so should we not be joyful about all else because there is difficult stuff going on. And I think, no, no, I think there's a place for all of it. There's one of the other things that, that helps me to reconcile all that's taking place in the world right now is something else that Ernest Holmes says that's had a big, big impact on me. And really, he's talking about the story of the prodigal son when he says the soul is on a journey. The journey is back to the father's house, and everybody makes it. And so this is what I have to know when I turn on the TV and I see what looks like such horrific news that all of those souls are on a journey and they're all going back to the Father's house and everybody makes it. But here I am on earth and humanly I do not know. I don't have access to the information. I don't have the reason, the understanding of why everybody goes through what they go through. But I can trust that there is a divine order unfolding in the universe and everybody is experiencing what they're supposed to, I hate to even say supposed to, but people are experiencing what they're supposed to experience for the evolution and growth of their soul. Now, because there's difficulty going on, and because I think we do get to be joyful even while there is difficulty going on, it occurs to me, I think the balance on the earth hangs in the fact that there are people who do spiritual practice, and this includes us. I mean this very seriously. I think, yes, 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 there are monks and nuns and caves and monasteries all over the world who are praying 24 hours a day, and I think that's an important part of keeping the balance on earth that's on earth. But I also think the fact that now, in this day and age, more people are meditating and praying and being affirmative in their thinking than has ever happened on the face of the planet. Part of that is just there are more people on the face of the planet too. But now more of us are doing spiritual work. So that means more of us are adding light into this equation. And I think that that's incredibly, incredibly important. Abraham Lincoln said that most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. Oh, wow. 
So, you know, people can be so incredibly cynical, can't they? You know, and, and I know, they, they always want to tell me after they've said something really negative, really cynical, that, that they're letting me know, you know, because they know I'm a minister, they're letting me know that they are, in fact, a realist. Yes, you know, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just a realist here. Oh, that's right, and I live in funky town. Yes, you're a realist, I live in funky town. Thank you, thank you for setting me straight. You know, it's easy to be cynical. It's like the woman who came to me for, you know, <laughs> to find her gift. Um, it doesn't really take any special talent to be cynical, does it? No, it's not hard to do. You know, one of the things I've learned contributes to, uh, to having more hope, I think, is to actually participate. You know, so I speak from experience. If I sit on the sidelines, it's very easy to be dismayed, to get dismal about all that's going on, right? But as soon as I say, hmm, the reason this comes to my attention again and again is clearly because God's telling me this is someplace I need to give some of my attention. I think what that means is God wants me to pray about this situation. So when I see the horrible stuff that seems to be unfolding in Afghanistan for so many people, that's because that's got my attention because I'm supposed to pray about that. You know, and when I see numbers going up concerning the pandemic, that's because I'm supposed to pray about that. I'm not supposed to, excuse me, we'll change languages here. I'm not supposed to quetch about it. You know, I'm not supposed to complain about it. Look, Emma Curtis Hopkins says metaphysical rule number one is don't complain. And boy, that is so hard. That is so hard sometimes when it seems like so many things could be better. Right? Things are better. See, I, just, I can't just wait for a reason to be hopeful, to be happy, to be joyful. I have to put some energy into that myself, I feel. So like I was saying, you know, one of the things I've learned is that that contributes to being hopeful about life is to actually participate in something. So if I see Afghanistan on TV, that reminds me to pray. When I see situations that trouble me in the world more immediate to me, the world that I'm living in, I say, mm, is this something I should be involved in? So you know, now every time I see somebody who's homeless on the street, I get to remind myself, our church is participating. We're feeding people every month. Now, is there something else I'm supposed to do, God? Is there something else, Spirit, that would uh, behoove me to embrace so that I will actually be more joyful. See, because I think when we listen to the voice of God, we're always going to be happier having listened to the voice rather than not listening to the voice and coming up with, well, you know what I do. When I, when I don't listen to the voice. You know? So God says, Mark, do this, however I get that message. And then I start to say, well, you don't mean right now. And surely, <laughs> surely you mean after I get these other things done. And yes, that's an excellent idea, God. I will put that on my legal pad, and that will come right after cleaning out the garage. I'm going to get to that. You know how, you know how we do? I, sort of, I, can, I can string it out for quite a while, but if I tell the truth, it is easy to be sad. It's easy to be depressed. And yes, sometimes we have heavy stuff on our plate as well. So I'm not saying to be in that kind of unhealthy denial about that. You know, everything we do programs our subjective mind. Everything we say about life, everything we say about love, everything we say about each other is programming our subjective mind. And that's telling the universe, this is what I want. So if you go around saying, oh, people are all farm animals, then that's what you're going to get. You know, and if you go around saying, you know, everywhere I go, I, I meet the face of God. That's what you're going to get. See. All the earth plane is, I think, is like, it's like a big mirror. It's just a reflection of our thought coming back to us again and again and again. And so for me, it's either I'm a half glass empty or I'm a half glass full. Now, I know lots of people who've got a glass that's half empty. And not only is the glass half empty, it's cracked and it's leaking everywhere, right? So they just see things as bad, getting worse and worse and worse all the time. And so I'll tell you, in all honesty, if I sit with that, what I get is no good will come from that. Absolutely no good. It will not benefit me. It will not benefit you. It will not ben the, benefit those babies that are being born or people who are getting married. So I remember reading um, an article with His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and they asked him 
quite simply, what's the purpose of life? And he looked up and he said, with that incredible smile, he, asked, he says, the purpose of life is to be happy. Now be happy. Hmm? And, and he says it in such a simple way that we think, that can't be right. Really? Can, can that really be that? Can he really, really mean that? See, but our mind chooses what facts we're going to focus on. You know, we're like we pull threads, you know, and we say, okay, these are the threads that I'm going to really give my attention to. It's about what hap it's about what things mean to us that determines our experience. It's not so much the things that happen. Because, you know, there's always lots of stuff that's happening. And you know what's really interesting? They say um, now in the new science that every second, every second, more than a million bits of information are coming at us. You know, so I mean, all of your senses are getting information all the time, all the time, but we can't process all that information at the same time. So out of over a million bits of information that are coming to us, we can process like 140. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm aware that, you know, there's light on me and there are pussy willows in front of me and that <laughs> I'm, I'm vaguely aware that there are bodies out there in the dark and things like that, but all this other stuff is going on. You know, I'm not aware that, you know, certain other things are happening in the universe all around me. So I think, wow, that's fascinating. So much information coming at me, I'm only able to actually perceive a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what am I going to choose to focus on? Am I going to choose to focus on what adds to my life, what brings life, or what depletes me and depletes my life? Um, I can always see you know, I think in every moment we have a choice. I can see how good it is, I can see how bad it is. I can see how good it is, I can see how bad. But the thing is, know that when you do, whichever of those you do, you are either adding to and expanding the light or adding to and contributing to the dark. Right? Now, I know we're in the science of mind, we want to be contributing to the light. Right? And we always have the capacity to get beyond whatever the current difficulty is. I know that this is true because we teach infinite God. God, the spirit that is everywhere and within us, is absolutely infinite. You know, so the power is in the spirit, not in the pain. See, and I think that people have approached their life like the power is in the pain. Oh my God, this pain is so big. This pain is so powerful. This pain is over going to overwhelm me. You know, but our mind goes to that place of, well, this is what people said, and this is what they did, and they hurt me so badly, and on and on and on like that. But we are at the effect that we believe in. You know, in other words, if I believe something in the world of effects has power over me, it will. And if I believe, well, that's just an interesting thing in the world of effects. It has nothing to do with me. No, sorry, so here's an example. If you were walking down the street, and there's a person sitting at the bus stop, you've never seen them before, and they called you a name. You don't know that person, so you wouldn't really take it in. You'd think, oh, that poor person, they're on the street, perhaps they're troubled in some way. OK, OK. You wouldn't necessarily take that in, would you, right? But if you were sitting with someone at lunch, and they said something to you, and so you're at lunch with them, you obviously have a closer relationship, you might really take that in and say, wow. That really means something. That really means something. But you know, we give everything the meaning it has for us. So in A Course in Miracles, it says, I am not a victim of the world I see. I love that lesson. That was a great lesson uh, again and again in my life. I am not a victim of the world I see. What does that say to us as students of science and mind? It says, I'm at cause. I am at cause here. Each and every one of us, we are a center of causation in our life. And so this is not to invalidate anyone's pain, but I, I do want to bring attention, what I do want to bring attention to is our capacity, our ability to move beyond the pain. Right? And we've all done that. So I know if we've done it in the past, we can certainly do it now and in the future. So spiritual practice is going to lift us above circumstance. You know, so it's, I know that if you would just take five minutes. So here's my suggestion. Five minutes in the morning. I know many of us lay there in bed for five minutes before we move. That's perfect. That's the perfect time to say, all right, I know I'm in partnership with the divine today. God is with me through all of it. Right? So I'll just take those five minutes to be quiet 
when I wake up. And then I think, you know, that worked so well, I'm going to do five minutes just before I go to bed. You know, I know a lot of people who tell me they turn the news on first thing in the morning, as soon as they wake up. And I think, honestly, I think that's not the best idea. Because again, you're programming yourself. Your mind is really open and receptive. You've been asleep, right? And your mind is in this very gentle, tender, impressionable place. Do you really need to catch up with the murder statistics first thing in the morning? Probably not. That's probably not going to add to your life. But taking those few minutes to be quiet and remember that God is present in me and in my day, that will do us some good. Mm -hmm. And then before bed, I'm as guilty of this as anybody because I love a good shoot 'em up. I really do. You know, I mean, I think all those Jason Bourne movies are the best thing that come down the pike in a long time. But I also know, having seen them all at least a dozen times, that they are not the kind of thing I should watch just before I go to bed. And I know the story, but I just know that imagery because, again, I'm going to go to sleep and my subconscious mind never sleeps. See, so those images, that information I take in just before I go to bed, I want it to be life-affirming. I want it to remind me of spiritual truth. I want it to be good and pleasing in every way. I don't want to feel like, you know, I know for a fact, if I watch, you know, your basic zombie apocalypse kind of movie, and I go right to bed, I am wrestling with zombies all night long. I am. That's just, that's just how our subconscious mind works. So, and I'm not saying don't watch those things if, they, if they're fun for you. Just don't watch them five minutes before you go to bed. See, healing does not come from hating the current conditions we face uh, in, in the world or in our body or in our interpersonal relationships. You know, our job, I think, is to love life every day. And we say, but how? How can I possibly love life? See, our thought forms create everything. That's how. Our thought forms create everything. So I'm adding light and love and positivity to the world, or I'm contributing to the darkness and the hate and the negativity. You decide. You decide. See, I just love science of mind, because science of mind gave me the tools, I think, to get free, to get clear, to get clean, to get healed. Uh, certainly with lots of things in my past, you know, that I was, because of the science of my teaching, I feel like I was completely able to forgive my mom and dad for whatever it is I thought they had done or not done. Science of mind has given me this notion of spiritual truth that God is all there is and that God is right where I am. Science of mind has taught me that I am here to co-create my life with God. Mm -hmm. So with all of that, with all of that, what excuse do I have now for not really seizing life? I mean, really grabbing it. You know, Joseph Campbell said, carpe diem. Remember that? Carpe diem, seize the day. So also, in A Course in Miracles, there's a line that I like very much. It says, I choose the joy of God instead of pain. Well, I'll tell you that's true today, but it wasn't always true because the pain, honestly, was a little more familiar than the joy of God, right? But now, now I choose the joy of God. I think that God can teach us through joy. God doesn't have to teach us through pain. People say, well, then why are there so many painful lessons? Because the painful lessons get our attention. I think when we're joyful, we tend to dismiss it as not important, right? But what if we said, my consciousness is a consciousness that can learn my lessons, the lessons I need to learn in this life, I can learn them in joyful ways. See, I think that would be tremendous, and I think that that's absolutely available to us, but part of that is to recognize that God is present in the joy. See, the way I like to say it is joy is what God's love feels like. So think about that for just a second here, that when we are having real joy in our life, hmm, that's what God's love feels like. That means that the love of God is fully present right there. Um, and I'm not saying that we should pretend to be what we're not, but if I'm handling things in my life, which I am, and I know you are, I find that handling what's in front of me and then the next thing, that, that actually gives me energy. So the power of God, the spirit of truth within us all casts out darkness. This is what we have to remember again and again. You know, the thing about our personal drama, okay, I'm going to speak for myself here totally, is I get really bored. I get bored with my drama, you know? I just get bored with saying the same thing or hearing the same thing. 
And I suspect if that's true with me that you probably have some drama in your life that you might be a little bored with too. Uh, and, and if not, then I just say, well, let's think about the last 18 months. That has been pretty dramatic. And I think it's been hard for everyone. And there is incredible goodness and beauty and love all around us. At the same time, the difficulty is taking place. So in this moment, just this very second right now, I'm OK. And in this moment where I know that I'm OK, I will pray for my brothers and sisters on the planet. You know, and I will send love and healing to everyone I can think of. Scriptures talks about if you build your house on rock or if you build your house on sand. And, and the passage goes that if you build your house on sand, the winds come and the rains and your house is, is dashed to bits, right? Like in the three little pigs, right? The, the wolf comes and poof, it's all blown away. But if you build your house on rock, if you build your house on a solid foundation, the winds come and it rains and everything is fine. Right? So the secret, I think, of happiness, honestly, is quite simple. The secret of happiness, are you ready for this? Get ready to write this down, is to think of other people first. Oh my God, it can't be that. It's got to be something else, really. Is that all you've got for me? No, honest to God, think about this, because we are all connected. Science of mind teaches we are one. We are one. So if I think of you first, I'm just thinking of another aspect of myself first. It would help me to get that you are me, that we are connected on the unseen side. See, in Science of Mind, the only thing I need to be saved from, honestly, is my own tendency to be negative. Right? I have to be sa what I have to be saved from is my own negative thinking. But we teach God is everywhere equally present. And so again, come back to this, that joy, joy is what God's love feels like. So this week, when you go out into the world, if you have moments, and I know you will, where you are absolutely feeling joy, then you have to say to yourself, this is what God's love feels like. So join me now. Turn your attention inward with me. Close your eyes and bring your awareness to the pattern of your breathing. We'll do a little inner work for a moment together. So breathing in and breathing out. Become aware of the pattern of your breath and note that at the point of our breath is where the highest God and the innermost God become one God. And so as we join together in consciousness today, I know for each and every one of us that the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are each and every one of us standing now in the midst of our own spiritual transformation, and I know that it's unfolding perfectly for each and every one of us. I declare now that in the midst of our most difficult lessons that we are gaining wisdom and strength, we're growing in power, we're being fulfilled in every need. I know that in those seeming weak moments, we are faced with a divine opportunity for God, for spirit to demonstrate just how awesome the power of God in each of us is. I'm certain this is the truth. Just as I am certain that we are all connected on the unseen side of life, that we are one in the mind and heart of God. And so I speak the word for us today that we are open to the joy of God, that it's okay for us to be happy in the moment to celebrate the good in our life. And at the same time, there is part of our consciousness that expands out from us, that reaches out from us to embrace the world that we live in. So where there is chaos and discord and where there is the appearance, the appearance of sickness, the appearance of unrest, we declare peace and harmony, all needs met, sufficiency of supply for everyone. So I know for us right now, right where we are, the experience and the expression of truth lifts us, it heals us, it fulfills us in every way. We include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And wrapping our spiritual arms around them, we know that God is right where they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in, a great big blessing, an energy of love, and healing and peace and restoration. 
reaching out to all people everywhere. No one include, no one, no one on the face of the earth is excluded. We bless our church, we bless all churches, and synagogues and temples and mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today. That there is raising up, that there is healing. We are indeed blessed. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
happy to take this before the peace sign. Yeah. Susan K. Wyatt, thank you so much, Susan K. Yeah. You can get Susan K.'s music at susankwyattauthor.com. So you can support her that way and be supported by her beautiful music. And let's say thank you to our wonderful Sam. It's wonderful to have you back with us, and Karen. <laughs> So, uh, for those of you who are watching us virtually, uh, donations can be made over the phone if you'd like to call the church office for up to 30 minutes after service. The number is 818-762-7566, or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donation page, or you can uh, text the word give to area code 818-457. 3419. And uh, for everyone, just a reminder that when you shop on Amazon, if you join Amazon Smile and designate us as the place for your donations every time you purchase something, the church gets some of that, uh, gets a donation. So thank you for all the ways that you're supporting us so we can be here for you. Uh, let's see. Prayer with the Practitioner is available after service. Um, so if you're attending on Facebook Live, just go to our Zoom link and we can put you uh, in a breakout room for a one-on-one -on -one prayer session with the practitioner. Uh, here in the sanctuary, if you'd like prayer with the practitioner, just please come forward. So uh, we know that you would like prayer and we'll have a practic practitioner pray with you. Um, and also for those of you who are here, as far as your donations go, we have boxes uh, at the back of the sanctuary in the foyer as you exit where you can drop off your donations. Uh, if you want us to answer a prayer request during the week, something comes up, you can email the prayer request to us at prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office and option four on the menu allows you to leave a voicemail so we can check those requests, uh, which we do every evening, and send them out to our practitioners. Uh, this coming Wednesday evening is our Teze service uh, that we do every other month. Uh, meditation begins at 6.50 p.m. Service starts at 7. And as always, our wonderful Joanne O'Brien will be leading the service. I'll be joining her. And if you've not attended before, our Teze service is an hour of sacred chanting, some readings and meditation. It's a beautiful experience, and we hope you can join us either live or virtually. Youth Church is open, so we're so excited that we're welcoming back our youth, uh, ages 3 through 18, uh, in the Youth Church for our 9.45 a.m. service. Uh, we do have a volunteer who is sometimes here to also watch the infants, but if not, we, uh, if you have children under three, you can bring them, and uh, the mommy and daddy and me room is available to you there. Uh, there will be a celebration of life service for our beloved long-term congregant, Mary Jane Hendry, uh, this coming Saturday, September 4th at 2 p.m., here in the sanctuary and also via Zoom. All are welcome, and the Zoom link can be found on our website. And we're inviting folks to join us for fun. We're looking for people to help host our services on Facebook Live. It's relatively easy, much simpler than what we have to go through for Zoom, and extraordinarily fun. So if you're interested, if that speaks to you at all, please call the church office. Again, that's 818-762-7566. Ask to speak to our wonderful Terry Prince, uh, extension 206. Yes, Terry, who's on camera too today. <laughs> uh, please know that our Zoom virtual patio, we will continue having that before and after all our services so you can connect with congregants uh, beforehand and afterwards to visit our men's group. It's meeting uh, today uh, from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. That's on Zoom. And we continue to have our Zoom meditation 
Monday through Saturday from 8 to 8.15 a.m. and hope you can join us for that. For any information about what's going on here, you zoned out on one of these announcements, but you thought you heard something, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and uh, you can get the information. You can also sign up for uh, our weekly blasts and our monthly newsletters. Um, now, before we stand up to sing the peace song together, I'm gonna let Dr. Mark stand up and make a little announcement. <laughs> Today is Lauren Thompson's birthday, so let's sing to Lauren. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lauren. Happy birthday. All right, so let's stand and we'll sing <laughs> some more. <laughs> let there be <laughs> Please repeat after me, I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. And remember, meet our new assistant minister out on the patio. Reverend Sidney is here and she wants to meet you. Hey! Mm -hmm.